Hello students, this is Dr. Anjali Shavasto, retired zoology professor from Jamshedpur Women University. And this is my YouTube channel, Adarsh Alaya. We are looking into the human health and disease. Part one, we have seen what is human health. Being healthy means being fit, not only physically, but also mentally and socially. And that depends on different factors that include the lifestyle and uh, social uh, conditions, uh, livelihood conditions, and a lot of things. And if that, uh, this also we have seen that being healthy doesn't mean always being disease free. There is a difference between being healthy and being disease free. Disease free person is not always healthy. He or she may uh, be ill mentally, or uh, some other conditions may also affect his good health, his or her. But uh, being disease free is also very must, uh, a must for a healthy lifestyle. And that disease is uh, certain factors which disturb the normal health or being very fit. And that disease may be caused by the uh, different ways that we have already seen in the last video that the diseases may be congenital, that is uh, from birth, that diseases may be acquired. Then acquired diseases may be communicable, non-communicable. So some uh, non-communicable diseases are acquired uh, during the uh, with the uh, time uh, period. Congenital diseases are uh, the diseases uh, from birth. That is the innate diseases we can say are acquired uh, diseases may be of two types. That is the communicable diseases are usually due to certain agents. Non-communicable diseases we have seen in details in our last video. If you haven't seen uh, gone through that, I'll suggest you go through uh, to know much about the diseases, how, what type of diseases are there, what are non-communicable diseases, what are uh, congenital diseases, then non-communicable diseases are again, not only, uh, uh, they are very much affected with the lifestyle, that is some of the diseases may be genetic, but they can be controlled by the lifestyle, good lifestyle, good way of living, like the diabetes, like the hypertension, etc. So you can go through for the details uh, my last video. In this video, we are main, majorly talking about the communicable diseases, which are the diseases which communicate, which can be communicate from one person to another person through different ways. And majorly, these communicable diseases are caused by certain particular agents or infectious agents, which are called as collectively that may be called as the pathogens or the infectious agents. These pathogens, how they bring about the normal, how they disturb the normal human health that we are going to see what are the types of pathogens. Pathogens are, so they, the pathogens may be referred as the agents that cause diseases a great sentence ma'am kato then so we are and what are those types pathogens are mainly of four types that we'll see protozoa viruses fungi bacteria these are the four main types and these the prions and virions are the different two types of viruses only we can say that the the more infectious but uh, very uh, hardly infected uh, things. These are the prions. These are the misfolded proteins without the uh, genomic part. And the virions are the uh, only uh, genomic part, DNA or RNA. This is the virions. So in your uh, syllabus, it, these, your, it is not mentioned about the prions and virions. So just to mention you should know the terms I have just preferred here because I have got this uh, presentation. And this is the prions, that is the unfolded, pro uh, misfolded protein, it can be said, that they are having the protein molecules without any covering, whereas their another uh, synonym is the v dots where only DNA or RNA are present. So uh, now let us come on our main topic, that is the pathogens, they are the infectious agents, which cause disease in various ways that we are going to see how they cause the disease before going into how they cause, how they uh, infect and what are the diseases they cause. 
Before that, we will see what are the main types that are there, the four main types, the parasites, protozoa, fungi, and bacteria or prokaryotes, then viruses. And then the prions and virions, as I have told you, then how they are transmitted. Their transmission of these pathogens we will see, and then we will see some list of certain common diseases and their pathogens. So in uh, upcoming video uh, uh, slides, uh, we are going to see about that. First of all, we will see the different types as the what are the pathogens that we have seen line by line. I'm not going to read this uh, these slides. These are for your notes or for your uh, uh, further uh, studies, you can go through for your uh, question answers. Now, the diseases, as I've told you, the transmissible diseases or the communicable diseases are caused by these pathogens, which all the pathogens, mostly they have a simple life cycle that is the infect host to reproduce or replicate there, as we have already seen in the last slide also, when we were looking into the health and its significance, that the 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 pathogens or the uh, infectious agents, they uh, affect their host, and that may be a single host, that may be intermediary host, but that host which on which they depend for their food, shelter, and their reproduction are the primary hosts, and they uh, infect them, they reproduce there, and in case of viruses, viruses are the agents which are, uh, which are uh, entirely, which may be considered as the non-living agents or the non-living uh, elements if we if they don't attack on the genome of their host. So that is that multiplication or that reproduction is called as the replication, and then transmitted to other hosts. And in that course, the pathogens. One more thing to be noticed is that never these parasites or the pathogens, they tend to kill their host because they know if they kill, they, they will kill their host. They also, majority of them will be killed. But to uh, unknowingly or unknowingly, they infect to an extent to their host that sometimes becomes inevitable, that the death be, uh, becomes inevitable and the death uh, occurs. So that are the extents of the infection of the pathogen. Then pathogen show structural adaptations for successful complication, completion of their life cycles. This is another very important feature of the pathogens that they show a number of adaptive features like the parasites, they acquire the suckers and hooks in like hookworm, they uh, develop hooks, then other uh, helminth parasites, they develop different types of suckers like in tapeworm so that they cannot, they prevent themselves from outflowing with the outgoing food particles in the digestive canal. So like that, a number of all the pathogens, they acquire the very important adaptive feature is an intense power of reproduction. They uh, usually these pathogens have got immense power of reproduction or multiplication to uh, uh, to avoid or to overcome the uh, the condition of their non-existence. अपने आप को खत्म होने से बचाने के लिए अपने रेस को खत्म होने से बचाने के लिए एक बहुत important feature pathogen develop करते हैं that is excessive power of reproduction. Then they also acquire adapt themselves to transit and uh, transmit, sorry, transmit or transit to uh, pass on the spread the diseases. Human body immune system acts, this we will see in the next video, we'll start the immune system. The third uh, part, we will see how the, uh, these pathogens are controlled naturally by our body that is called as immune system that is a, that uh, fights as a defense mechanism against the pathogens that we will see in the uh, uh, the next um, part three. Then, then the types may be divided as we have seen into the four main types of pathogens. Uh, the types of pathogens are four main types. Bacteria, the prokaryotes having no nucleus, cytoplasm and outer covering with their locomotive uh, virally or fibrilli and a flagellum. Then are the viruses, as I have told, these are the non-living, uh, they may be considered as the non-living things unless they infect their hosts and alter the structure of the genome of their host. 
the viruses are non-living. So the viruses are uh, something different from the bacteria. Then are the fungi. The fungi are previously kept with the plants due to their outer body covering or the body wall. But now, because of their heterotrophism, the plants are mostly autotroph. That is, they synthesize their uh, food by themselves with the help of uh, chlorophyll, which is completely absent more in these fungi. And their cell wall is formed of uh, chitin an animal like uh, cell wall so uh, they uh, they may present a transition between the plants and animals that is not very much supported but still some of the scientists some of the taxonomists they have considered uh, fungi as a transitional stage between the plants and animals due to various reasons one of the reason is the cell wall uh, composition and then the fourth type are the parasites which include the protozoans different type of protozoans or protists, then are the, uh, uh, the protozoans, then helminths. These are mostly endoparasites that is found within the body, endoparasites. And the third, third type of parasites are the ectoparasites. Mostly these are the mollusks, a few mollusks, and mostly the arthropods, varieties of arthropods or large number of arthropods like the ticks, lysis, uh, then uh, arachnids, then uh, pests. So a number of ectoparasites are there uh, um, uh, included in the phylum arthropoda. So these are the four main types. First is the bacteria, microscopic pathogen reproduce rap rapidly. After entering the body, they can release toxins. How they cause, cause disease? Uh, that is due to the uh, production of to toxins. They uh, rather don't feed upon their hosts. Bacteria are very microscopic animals. They don't much feed upon their host, they, the diseases they cause, they act as pathogens mostly because of releasing toxins that damage the tissues and cause illness. That is, the and this uh, damaging is mainly done for the reproductive, the multiplication activities of the bacteria. They are of diverse shapes. Usually it has been said that bacteria are having rod-shaped, dot-shaped, spiral-shaped, and comma-shaped. So four main types of uh, bacteria, there are varieties of, they are numerous, numerous bacteria are present everywhere, inside, outside. And many of them, rather, majority of bacteria are not harmful to us. There are good bacteria and bad bacteria. And good bacteria, again, quantity-wise, uh, we consider, they are much, much more than the entire population. But still, there are, bad bacteria also that act as the pathogen creating hazards to our health. So they can live in any environment, external as well as internal, especially for the treatment of the bacteria are specifically considered the medicines which are called as antibiotics that treat, that are done and majority of these antibiotics are from the fungi. That is the bacteria, the pathogen itself are used as some of the uh, bacteria or the pathogens themselves are used for the treatment of the uh, these diseases. They may, uh, they may happen either naturally or may acquire resistance due to overdose. Sometimes these antibac uh, antibiotics are also not so much uh, fruitful because of overtaking of antibiotics. So it is said you must have heard that antibiotics should be taken with utmost care. Not all bacteria are pathogenic. As we have seen, there are harmless bacteria and well, some are very good bacteria performing a lot of good functions like our gut bacteria, like uh, the bacteria causing the curds, uh, formation of curd, then uh, so, so many pathogens, not only bacteria. We'll see that uh, some of the fungus, there are a number of fun uh, fungi which are useful. However, the, uh, the other three types, that is the viruses, fungi, uh, and the parasites, they, are, they cause much more uh, uh, damage to our body in comparison to bacteria. 
Then the second category is of uh, viruses. These are smaller than bacteria. Virus invades host cell, replicates, producing hundreds and thousands of new viruses. As we have seen, the viruses, as you can see here, the diagram. This is the uh, this is the bacteria. These are the viruses. Viruses may be of various shapes and uh, various type of, of viruses are there. This is the simplest uh, virus shape, having a proteinous coat inside which is the genome, and it is having a small tail-like structure, the fibril-like structure. Without tail, rod-shaped viruses are also reported. And bacteria are also have been uh, reported from different of different types and shapes and size. And uh, then are the fungi, which are the multicellular structures from usually called as mouths also. And all their different types are molds. And uh, mushrooms, you must have heard the uh, edible uh, uh, fungi is that there. But fungi, the mostly they cause harm to the body, but there are certain good fungi also. They occur in warm and damp places. They are the heter uh, heteromorphs, that is, they are not autotrophs, heterotrophs rather. That is, they are mainly feeding upon the uh, decay decaying animals, sometimes on dead animals also, and they may cause hazardous uh, effect on the health. Then are the protozoans, as I have told you, parasites. Yeah, this this uh, protozoa group may be uh, con collectively considered as the parasites that include the protozoans also and helminths also and certain ectoparasites of the phylum arthropoda and mollusca. So these are the main uh, types uh, of bacteria. Here are the details. This is the bacteria, Shuratia coli, then viruses, herpes, herpes simplex. There are various types. They are non-living particles reproduced by taking over living cells. Taking over, it should be here, the genome or the life living style of the living cells. Then are the fungi, which are mushrooms and yeast. They are uh, the plant-like structures per, per, have showing various branches. Plant-like, matlab, in me bohat sare is ke molds. These are the different types of fungi, spher spherical maybe. Pro, uh, uh, sorry, yeast are the unicellular. Mostly they are the multicellular, but the yeast are the unicellular. All these are multicellular. They are in form of molds. Bohat cover it, cover karke ka, bunches mein dikhai hai, then uh, they are maybe spherules sometimes they formed of hyphae high, high and mycelium so these are these uh, this is the fungi and the different types human diseases caused by these uh, fungi some important diseases are ringworm skin pe jo ring uh, ban jate hai, ring ring ki tarah ki jisko daad bhi kehte hai, then athlete food tinias uh, candidiasis, then histoplasmosis, mushroom poisoning, mushrooms are poisonous also. Then comes the protozoa, or it here should be the parasites also we can consider as these parasitic worms and protozoa and ticks and fleas and uh, lysis, the, those are the ectoparasites that we have seen earlier. These are the, sing, uh, the protozoans are the single cell uh, organisms and they may cause they mainly, as pathogen, they mainly infect the digestive uh, regions, elementary canal, ke different areas, ko they parasitize, and they cause a number of diseases like diarrhea, uh, dysentery, maybe dysentery, then Giardia lambia, this is the intestinal parasite that uh, causes uh, traveler's diarrhea by uh, giardiasis, then uh, trypanosoma causes the sleeping sickness, leishmania, causing the kalaza that we are going to see in the upcoming slides. So these are the types of pathogens. Then the next top point is the mode of transmission of diseases. Uh, that is another very important point, how these pathogens are spreaded from one to another that is, they are mostly the communicable diseases. They are responsible mostly for their uh, diseases passed from one patient to another patient in different ways. Direct method, indirect method, two important methods are there. Direct transmission, person to person, direct transmission, that is, direct in, involves direct contact. That may be from by person to person contact or by 
droplets with the help of the droplets when uh, if we are very close to the uh, the diseased person or infected person and if it sneezes cough uh, coughs or speaks even by speaking also that uh, droplets may uh, come out from your mouth nose uh, etc and those droplets may contain the uh, these uh, infectious uh, pathogens which can be transmitted through uh, the the uninfected uh, to the uninfected person through the different uh, ways like through the mouth through the nose through the uh, breathing it can go uh, it can enter or through it can uh, uh enter penetrate through the skin in different ways suppose there are some wounds or uh, uh, certain ruptures in the uh, in the body parts through which it can enter so that may be uh, by the uh, direct spread of droplets then third is by the process of blood transfusion and transplant transplacental infection from mother to uh, fetus placenta you must be uh, you must have heard very important part of the mother through which the uh, the fetus gets all the life supported parts oxygen then or the hormonal uh, system then um, uh, food digestion nutrition everything and that person through that placenta also or the blood transfusion is uh, the method of changing of blood in various uh, pathogenic conditions for the treatment purposes the blood is um, transfused from one patient to another patient in uh, different uh, through the different ways and that blood transfusion also may cause but one very important example of such uh, infection is the hiv spread of hiv by knowingly or unknowingly so direct transmission may occur by touching kissing sexual intercourse at uh, this is very important uh, way of transmission of communicable diseases uh, of certain uh, pathogens which can be transmitted through the blood or through the body fluids like the semen or other the uh, other uh, uh, reproductive uh, fluids of the body then other contact contacts uh, through by, during childbirth medical procedures several times bahut bar injection dene ke dauran blood chadhane ya lene ke dauran these are certain method uh, medical procedures during which the uh, the communicable diseases can be uh, communicated or transmitted then injection of drugs breastfeeding etc airborne shot now let us see in the upcoming slide there are various ways of infection or transmission of these diseases that may be air borne that may be short distance or long distance air borne diseases then transfusion transplacental these 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 we have already seen so now this is the indirect transmission indirect transmission may be again may be in a number of ways indirect as the name says the direct contact is not necessary here it is not necessary that the person should come the uh, the disease person is coming directly in contact of the healthy person but through the uh, different ways of transmission uh, transportation the uh, the causes of the diseases may uh, uh, communicated may be communicated from the infected person to the healthy persons or from the there are not only the person the, um, doesn't mean always the human so sometimes through the other animals also through, through the other ways also the disease or the pathogens are transmitted and that may result through food and drinking water so, uh, so indirect transmission having uh, is having um, uh, majorly eight types of transmission in indirect way the pathogens can be transmitted first is airborne the most important and uh, the like the uh, measles that is called as the chicken pox or the small pox the pathogens remain suspended in air for long durations and uh, when uh, a disease, uh, uh, infected person or a diseased person Uh, is in some environment and from uh, where the disease uh, the pathogen of the disease is uh, spread in the uh, air only and it may spread for long durations like the measles it is said that for 21 days uh, is the incubation period or the uh, that period is called as specifically for the chicken pox there is certain particular term i'm just missing uh, that 
period uh, is said to be very uh, infective period for the uh, for uh, this pathogen that spreads through uh, and for that specific leaves are also have been left um, I just bhuli who term that is very important term if i just recall i'll tell you then are the contaminated objects just like uh, during uh, covid 19 you must have heard don't touch the door knobs wherever you go just wash your hands so like the contaminated door knobs were continue uh, door knobs is just an example any surface for where the the pathogen may continue for a short time and then if uh, uh, someone touches in that during that living period of that pathogen uh, and then touches uh, the uh, its own mouth nose eyes etc without washing hand this uh, these uh, diseases uh, pathogens can be transmitted germs spread through contaminated blood products and medical supplies that we have already seen on so these pathogens are also called as infectious agents or the germs then they are also spreading through the fru food and drinking water by unhygienic uh, methods unhygiene so so the most important thing jo uh, nowadays it is you must be listening everywhere every here and there that always wash your hands always sanitize yourself now sanitizer ha have become so much uh, common nowadays for uh, and it is not only important for this covid that is the pandemic uh, era that just passed uh, we can't even say that it is passed it we are going through but always the good and healthy lifestyle that is washing hands keeping yourself clean keeping your surrounding clean clean always helps in uh, this uh, pre prevents the transmission of these pathogens or the gene, germs then animal to person contact when infected animal bites or scratches healthy person or when animal waste are handled improperly that is animal waste we are uh, fond of uh, having pets it's a good thing but the pets are also the pets this uh, litters uh, disposal is uh, requires or uh, on a very very uh, uh, precautionary handling many feces of the pests pests if they are mishandled or it is not washed the the cleaner is not uh, acquiring or the good preventive measures like the cat litter spreads toxoplasma gondii parasite this is a parasite that may that is that passes through uh, while uh, cleaning the cat's uh, feces so like that this animal to person contact is always uh, also a one way then animal reservoir animal to animal transferred to humans that is the some animals act as the reservoir for the pathogens and from there they, they pass to the Uh, human and they cause diseases like they are mostly called as zoonotic diseases zoo animals so the diseases or the germs transmitting through the uh, animals are the zoonotic diseases like anthrax anthrax is a, it is a very uh, commonly hard disease it is uh, it spreads through sheep then rabies and plague from rodents and other mammals west nile virus from birds This, these diseases are very uh, they may be as we have seen in the last slide in the last video there are certain acute diseases and there are chronic diseases so these animal reservoir uh, persons or the vehicle born uh, diseases these uh, may cause the uh, they, they may cause acute diseases and sometimes they may convert into the chronic conditions also so the this uh, pl plague one at uh, one time was there that it, it uh, spread it uh, in form of the uh, epidemic it uh, uh, and the huge loss of population was there so like those uh, pandemic conditions are also caused by these animal reservoirs then vehicle borne transmission occurs through contaminated materials like food clothes bedding and cooking utensils so even the uh, utensils are not properly uh, clean then uh, the the carriers leak these things act as the carriers or the vehicle for the transmission of the pathogens then are the vector borne transmissions these are usually the vectors are the intermediate hosts which themselves are not get it uh, be uh, uh, get any harm 
of by these pathogens, but they act as an intermediate host that pass from one uh, human to another human or one uh, primary host to another primary host. And these are mostly the insects or the mosquitoes, like the fleas, lice, then uh, ticks, lice, mosquitoes. An example of such diseases are malaria, Kalazar, Lyme disease. This is a uh, severe disease uh, causing uh, the, the lungs. And uh, then there are other types of diseases like the sleeping sickness, uh, trypanosome, uh, trypanosomiasis, a lot of diseases are there in the last slide I have given, the two last two slides I have given, uh, very common diseases, their pathogens, their symptoms, and some of the important uh, treatment or the medicines. Then are the long distance airborne. That is the dissemination of very small droplets. This is the uh, airborne disease, hawa se hi felt hai, but that carries very small droplets to a suitable point of entry, usually the respiratory tract. This is the long, it can travel to the long distances, and sister is called it long distant airborne diseases or long distant airborne pat uh, pathogens. Dust particles also facilitate uh, airborne diseases like the fungal spores, indirect transmission occurs through injections also. Then are the environmental reservoirs like the soil, contaminated soil, contaminated water, com contaminated vegetation. Now, the chemicals are used as the manures or the fertilizers, and those chemicals get stored in form of uh, in different uh, parts of the uh, vegetation, and that cause a lot of uh, diseases uh, transmission like the hookworm that is ankylostoma transmitted through contaminated soil, then legionnaires disease spread by water supply through cooling towers and evaporative. These are the lung infections. They cause the lung infections mainly. So these are the uh, pathogens. They pass through the cooling systems uh, of the that uh, water supplies and large scale water supplies through the cooling towers and evaporative con condensers. So these are the diseases, uh, most of the disease transmission, the spread of communicable diseases, the direct method, the indirect method, indirect method, maybe as uh, airborne, vehicle, vector borne, intimate, inanimate, that is uh, different types of without animals like the uh, un, uh, living th non living things uh, uh, spreading through the non living things also. Then intermediate host, and that can be direct and indirect. So these are the indirect water uh, types of indirect method and types of direct method. This mode of transmission of diseases, this also we have seen now in details. These are the different ways. And what are these diseases that you can go, uh, take from this uh, these slides for your notes? The cholera, you must have a pneumonia that infects the uh, lungs. There are different types of pneumonia caused by the these pneumonia are of various types. It may be caused by fungi also. It may be caused by the bacteria also. Uh, uh, that uh, affects the infection. Then typhoid, then tetanus, then diphtheria. These are the com most common diseases. Uh, and they can be transmitted in various ways. These are the representations of the transmission that we have already seen. Now, this also we have already seen. These are the methods of the transmission, air, water, food, contact, mosquito. These all we have seen. These are the points you can take from for your notes. Then significance, that is the prevention measures. This was the important, the uh, prevention on, or the good or the healthy measures, washing your hands, keeping yourself clean. Infection prevents the um, distinguish between type of transmission, selecting control methods what are the control methods that you can be you can take from here it is not specifically mentioned in your syllabus so far as i have seen but i have given that you should know uh, that is for your common knowledge also this is uh, necessary how these uh, the spread of these pathogens can be uh, controlled now, the pathogens as causative agents of diseases. As we have seen, pathogens are of four types, bacteria, viruses, protozoans, 
uh, helminths and ect ectoparasites. Now, one by one, let us see some of the important diseases caused by these pathogens. Uh, this is the list of the certain important diseases, tuberculosis, that is men meningitis, food tuberculosis is uh, done by, uh, caused by a different type various types of bacteria to the various body organs, bone TB you must have on, lung TB you must have on. Usually the commonly the TB affects the lungs, but uh, this TB appears in other parts of the body also, the bacteria, uh, tuberculosis bacteria. These are the different types of bacteria causing the different type of diseases. The rod shaped bacteria, E. coli, that causes the food poisoning, intestinal defects, then spherical bacteria. They cause uh, the sore throat, then uh, bacillus uh, cause tuberculosis is mainly the tuberculosis bacteria are called as commonly as the bacillus. Then are the tetanus bacteria, bacillus, uh, typhoid uh, bacteria, then spiral bacteria. So these are the, this is the gonorrhea is a uh, sexual uh, sexually transmitted disease. Then typhoid, then chlamydia. These are the uh, diseases uh, caused by specific type of bacteria then are the viruses they do not have cell they can't uh, they can't reproduce without invading living cell and the important uh, viral diseases are influenza rotavirus measles mumps hiv coronavirus uh, is very much created a lot of hazards in the uh, very recently that have affected a lot of lives and lot of uh, you can say families, including myself also. So anyway, these viruses are, these are the important features of the viruses. And these are the different groups of viruses causing a number of diseases. You can take the representations are here. You can take from here. The, in the last two slides, as I have told you, I have given the list of the diseases also caused by these pathogens. Then are the fungi, 300 species are known. They may cause different types of uh, illness like asthma, skin and nail infection, lung infection like pneumonia, as I've told you, bloodstream infection, meningitis, that is the brain fever. Uh, fever uh, meningitis is also called as brain fever. This uh, uh, fungi, they infect the brain. Then these are different groups of fungi, if you are interested. You can take from here the names and their shapes, the fungi among us. This is a general uh, list. Then the protozoans. The protozoans are mainly the endoparasites. They are the uh, unicellular organisms. They are having a nucleus. The various types of uh, protozoans are there, causing the different type of uh, diseases called as pathogenic pathogenic protozoans they are they are uh, common cell protozoans uh, there are different types of protozoans opportunistic sometimes they cause harm sometimes they do, do not co cause harm sometimes they are common cell protozoans that is neither they exist in human body but does not uh, cause any harm to uh, human that is apsi uh, se rehna then are the pathogenic protozoans which cause a number of pathogenic conditions or the diseased conditions. The pathogenic um, protozoans are the amoeba histolytica, Giardia, Lambili, B. coli. These are the entamoeba histolytica, E. coli. So these are the common uh, pathogens. So these are different types of protozoans. They cause and uh, the diseases caused by them. You, uh, this is the general information. Then comes after the protozoa are the parasites. Parasites may be ectoparasites, parasites may be endoparasites. Mostly the helminths are the, uh, even the protozoans and the helminths, they are the endoparasites, that is, they live within the body and then are the ectoparasites. The endoparasite, the parasitic uh, protozoa endoparasite may be have already seen. Now let us see the helminth parasite. Helminths are the worms, they are also commonly called as the worms, and they are the macro parasites. That is, they can be seen by the naked eyes. They are commonly also called as worms and the helminths group uh, classification you must have read. There are the uh, helminths that are the flat worms and the cylindrical uh, thread worms they are called as. Nemat 
nemat helminthes and plati helminthes nemat mean thread like and plati means flat so the, there are two groups of the flat plati helminths includes the cystodes and trematodes tapeworm and li uh, living uh, liver fluke sorry so these are the parasites uh, of uh, uh, worm like parasites nemato uh, nematodes or nemat helminths includes the round worm that is the uh, the ascaris then hookworms spin worms then cestodes they include the liver fluke Uh, uh sorry cestodes are the tapeworms from beef pork and fishes more than 5000 uh, then set cestodes are the tapeworms parasite like trematodes tinea solium liver flukes so these are the uh, plati helminths uh, parasites then another type of very important uh, parasite worm parasitic worm is onco cystis this is the this is this is found in the eye these this worm is found in the eye and it causes the river blind blindness slowly it uh, causes the uh, non repairable blindness in the eye so these are the parasites these are so this is one representation this is the hookworm this is the filar uh, filariasis that caused by wicheraria this is the cystomasiasis uh, cystom uh, cystosomasiasis by cystosoma then these are the uh, the this is the eggs of cystosoma then these are pair of adult worms these are uh, this is the just these are the different types of helminths and these this is a list of the different worms causing the different body parts affecting the different body parts then are the ectoparasites that are mainly mainly these annelids they uh, are uh, only mainly uh, parasitize the cattle uh, etc not the human disease the human uh, ectoparasites annelids are uh, not known for as human uh, parasites but the arthropods include the ticks lices and mosquitoes the, these are arachnids these are insects which uh, are the these this is the bed bug this is human flea this is head louse then body lice then mosquito act as the vectors that we have seen that is the intermediate host for a number of diseases so this is the basic difference and this is the endoparasite live inside ectoparasite live outside this is a flea now the ectoparasites may include the may uh, live the, like the lice that live on the surface of host move by crawling as opposed to flying and human as their only host so this is the these are the different types of lice so this is about the ectoparasites now last but not the least some of the common diseases and their pathogens this is a list this uh, this is the list of diseases by the viruses list of diseases by bacteria list of diseases by uh, fungi by protozoa and then by worms and this is the trans proteins uh, only misfolded protein may also may cause a certain act as the pathogens affecting causing different types of diseases so these two uh, slides include a diff number of diseases their uh, group their uh, organism where uh, what is the name of that path pathogen and where they parasitize how they enter and what parts they parasitize the symptoms are here so you can go through this and these are last but not least the preventive measures that we have already seen medical advice reduce the chances of sti that is sex, uh, sexual transmitted uh, transmitted infecting uh, diseases then the safe uh, that is uh, essential for the uh, uh, for the uh, prevention from the uh, for the prevention of the sexually transmitted infections or sexually transmitted diseases avoiding insect bites staying home when ill uh, cleaning kitchens and bathroom keeping surfaces clean keen, keeping update recommended vaccinations now this is very important there are certain uh, medicines or certain agents pathogen themselves are used as the preventive uh, vaccines this come immunization and vaccination kehte hain that we will see in the upcoming uh, videos uh, i think two uh, at least two videos will be required for the uh, immune system uh, the innate immune system acquired immune system and then immunization and vaccination so uh, that we will see in the next slide so with this ends this topic that is the pathogens their types their uh, 
common uh, diseases caused by these pathogens and the the parts or the areas infecting by these pathogens so do like share and subscribe my channel if you like it tell to your students your friends about it which is completely totally free of cost and uh, help me sp uh, spreading this spirit of learning and teach thank you press the bell don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of upcoming videos and see the description box also because i just uh, want to give you the summarized very zipped part of the uh, the video in my uh, description box thank you